A small roller coaster with very light wheels is pulled to the top of the hill and then released from rest. The entire track is frictionless and air resistance is negligible. Find the minimum height of the hill so the coaster can complete the 15 meter radius circular loop. We're looking for the minimum height. This means that the coaster barely makes the loop. The coaster is almost going to fall off the loop. If it is almost going to fall off, but still makes the loop, the almost falling part must happen right there at the top. And what do you think it means if I say the coaster is almost going to fall off over there? It means the coaster is almost losing contact with the track, which means it's almost losing the contact force. The normal force on the coaster is zero. Since the clue given by the problem essentially tells us the normal force is zero up there, we have to use forces. So I'm going to start over there with the direction of acceleration. The coaster is doing circular motion, so there's the centripetal acceleration going down towards the center. And uh, for the vertical forces, I have mg and the normal force, the contact surface can only push. The normal force pushes downward, but of course right now the normal force is zero. There's no friction, so that's it. And so when I write the net force equals to ma, the net force would be the mg only. And that equals to ma, the centripetal acceleration for circular motion, that's uh, v squared over r for acceleration. The mass does not matter. And that means uh, the velocity at the highest point has to be square root of uh, gr. Now, if I plug in the g is 10, the r is 15, I will get square root of 150. Of course, I'm not looking for the speed of the roller coaster up there. What I'm looking for is the height. So I have to use this information to find the height. If I know the speed over here and I want the height, I can use the idea of uh, conservation of energy. No friction and air resistance, so the total mechanical energy stays the same. Initially, the coaster up there starts from rest, so no kinetic energy. There is only mgy and there is no spring involved, so just mgy. And the height above ground, if I say this is my ground, then that's uh, h above ground. At the end is when the coaster is over there, we know it has to be moving at that speed, so there must be one half mv squared. And uh, over there, it's also up high, so there is uh, mgy, and what is the height above ground? That's 2r. Again, the mass cancels, so I have g times uh, h equals to one half See, I need v squared, that's why I didn't bother to take the square root. So v squared is 150 plus g times twice the r. And this gives us the h is 37.5 meters. So that's the minimum height. So at first, we use the forces to figure out the minimum speed for the coaster. And then we back and use conservation of energy and found the minimum height. Now suppose the roller coaster designer decides to make the hill 50 meters high. How much would the normal force be on the 400 kilogram coaster when it gets to the top of the circle? This time, we know the height, and we have to find the force. So it is kind of like this part, but backwards. 
we have to first use the conservation of energy to find the speed up there and then use the speed and forces to find the force we are looking for. So if I use conservation of energy, again, initially the coaster starts at rest, no one have mv squared, only mgy, and this time we know the height is 50. There's no spring involved, so we don't have to worry about the spring. And then right there, the coaster would be moving with a certain speed. We don't know the speed. And uh, it's also up high, so it has the M, G, Y, and the height would be again 2 R. So the mass again cancels. And uh, if we plug in the g equals to 10, then we can have the speed is square root of 400, which is 20. So the speed of the coaster must be 20 meters per second over there. Now we can use the forces. So the acceleration over there will still be downward. If you draw the force diagram, it will be mg and the normal force from the track going downward. Just this time, the normal force is not zero and we're looking for that normal force so when we write the net force equals to ma the net force uh, will be these two added together they're in the same direction they help each other so i have mg plus uh, normal force they work together that's m times uh, again centripetal acceleration v squared over r now the mg for a 400 kilogram coaster will be 4,000 plus the normal force equals to 400 times v squared will be 400 over r. And this will give us a normal force 6667 newtons. So if the coaster starts at this minimum height, when it gets there, it will be barely touching the loop, normal force will be zero. If you start at greater height, then the coaster will be faster over here and therefore pressing against the track with a greater force. Of course, if the track starts at 50 meters, because in reality there is air resistance and friction. By the time the coaster gets here, the speed will be lower. If the speed is lower, that means uh, you would not require as much normal force. I have a track over here with a circular loop. Instead of having a cart traveling down the track, I have a steel ball that can roll on the track. A rolling ball is not quite the same as a cart with very light wheels because the entire ball will be rotating as it goes down. But for the purpose of this demonstration, it's okay to overlook that difference. So, I'm going to start the ball here, sort of the same height as the top of the track. Let's see what happens. It didn't even get close to the top. Because, you know, in reality, there is certainly air resistance and friction to take energy away. Let's try a little higher. Doesn't make the loop. And uh, even higher here. It makes the loop this time. Now let's uh, try the highest. If the ball is really fast, that just means uh, it requires a lot more normal force. 